Infinite Webinar. We're back this week. We are with Diageo. I know a lot of folks are going to be very excited to hear about uh, Diageo and what their process is. I have uh, an old friend of mine, Latoya Joseph Gittins, who uh, I've uh, met at prior, at, at, um, prior to Diageo when she was with Marsha McLennan. And we've had uh, many great conversations. She's agreed to join us today. So Latoya, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, you got it. Um, so uh, first and foremost, um, tell us what, give us a little bit of, and tell us a little bit about what you do at Diageo, your title, and um, maybe just a, just a quick brief summary about Diageo. Sure. Um, so I'm the HR director there. I support um, the marketing and innovation team for North America specifically. Um, so many of you probably don't know Diageo as a company, but you probably know many of the brands. So um, the brands are like Johnny Walker, Smirnoff, um, Kettle One, Bullet, Crown Royal, um, Ciroc, to name a few. Um, so you know many of those brands, I'm sure. Um, and so really, I mean, the company was born out of a merger. And so it was a merger from Guinness Brewery as well as um, Metropolitan. Um, it's called Grand Metropolitan. And so that then became um, one company called Diageo. So that's how that all came to be. Cool. So, uh, well, let's, let's get started. First and foremost, um, when it comes to entry, do you, do you all hire both entry-level candidates and interns? Yes, we do. Okay. We hire both. And where can candidates find those roles? Those roles are all posted online. Um, so we post those opportunities. I mean, with the internships, we work directly with the schools um, okay. that we're working with. Um, but yeah, we pretty much post those opportunities online. Okay. And those can be found on like the Diageo career page or would you recommend Correct. folks go some? Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and mainly for the entry level type roles, right? So for internships, there's a lot of partnering with the schools. Um, so I've probably less visibility there, but certainly for the entry level opportunities. Can you give us an idea of some of the, some of the titles that you hire for or you hire into for, for the entry level? Sure. Um, so they're generally um, for the marketing organization. They're um, associate brand manager roles, uh, marketing associate roles. Um, on the innovation side, it's very similar at the associate level. Got it. Okay, cool. And then the internships would, would kind of be an intern version of those roles? Correct. Got and it. those are very much uh, project related, so very specific to a project. Okay, cool. Um, can you tell us what the interview process is like in as much detail as, as possible? Yeah, I mean, so I would say pretty standard in that usually um, you go through a recruiter. So once you've applied, um, a recruiter will then do the outreach in terms of going through your background, um, just an overall synopsis of what you've done, the accomplishments that you're proud of, and what you're looking for in your next opportunity. Um, and then from there, we usually have a short interview slate of interviewers that are involved in terms of interviewing candidates and having those conversations just to assess for fit. And then once that's done, um, you know, we all kind of get together to see, like, you know, do we believe that this person will really thrive and be successful at the company? Um, and then based on that, make a determination. But it's pretty, I would say, it's not a long, arduous process. It's pretty short, and we're very succinct about who's going to be involved in that process. And do you, for entry level in particular, do you bring folks on site? Do they, do they have, like, a typical one or two rounds on the phone or on Skype and then... Yeah, so that was the, I guess, traditional post, you know, the, the way we handle things um, prior to COVID. Yeah. Um, I think it remains to be seen how we'll evolve that um, coming out of COVID, but that's been generally the, the way we've handled it in the past. And with on-site, um, is it typically an all-day affair and they meet, you know, five or six different people? Um, so not necessarily. Um, so we've had different approaches on one approach where it will be maybe just a couple of hours. Um, another approach where we'll have like a number of candidates come on site and then just kind of spend a day there. Um, and so that's something that I think we'll, we'll likely have to revisit and figure out how we want to manage that. But generally, I would say um, the prominent way of handling it would be just a couple hours on site. Got it. Okay, wonderful. Um, let's jump into the resume. What is the first thing that you typically look for when it comes to students or, or, or uh, recent graduates on their resume? Um, so for me, I mean, I typically look for leadership um, opportunities, um, transferable skills. Um, I think having a strong GPA is certainly helpful, um, but I would say just more of like the leadership and any kind of applicable skills. Is GPA important to you all? 
I think it does um, reflect this, the type of person, um, you know, if, if it's a high performer, someone who's really kind of taken their um, studies very seriously and has thrived. And so I think it does indicate a bit. Do you have a minimum, a GPA minimum? No, point? not at all. Cool. When it comes to the objective, what, you know, what's, what's your opinion? I think for entry level talent, the objective is actually really important um, because it kind of sets out like what you're looking to do. Otherwise, I think it could be very vague and anonymous as to like exactly what direction you want to go. And usually at the entry level point, you have like various experiences, right? So you may have done a little bit of work here, a little bit of work there. Um, and so the objective really kind of pulls it all together as to like, what are you looking to do? And wh what are you looking to like move into? So it's more specific. So I think at the at an entry level, um, you would want to be clear about what you're looking for so that there are no guesses. I think you have to kind of set the tone based on the type of company. So if the company is one that's more like buttoned up and much more conservative, then I would, I would be more professional about that. If it's a startup, then I would definitely bring your full on personality. Would you say Diageo falls somewhere in between? Yeah, I mean, you can certainly be yourself. And I think especially in creative areas, like you, you have that latitude to show that creativity and that passion. What, what are some ways that candidates can stand out when it comes to their resume? I would say, you know, just working with certain associations or playing leadership roles in volunteer capacities, I think is a way you can stand out. I think the prominent part of that is really just showing your leadership capabilities. Um, because I think at the end of the day, I mean, you would be coming in for a specific role, but the company's going to be looking at how can we grow this person's career. And so to see if you're going to have um, that capability is really going to be looking at what, what have you done and how have you demonstrated those, those leadership skills, even though you didn't really work in a role where you were at a certain level to be able to certainly illustrate that. So I think it's really about, you know, having those it could be a volunteer, it could be an association, it could be membership, um, whatever the case may be, but something where you really illustrated your leadership skills. Um, entry level, I would read them because I think very similar to the objective, it does illustrate exactly what you're looking for and what kind of experience you're looking to have. And so I think there needs to just be clarity when you're on a, you know, an entry level path of just understanding like, well, what is it that you want to do? What does that entry level opportunity look like for you? When they're interviewing with Diageo, do you recommend candidates dress in a suit, business casual? Casual? Probably business casual um, would be the best way to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty business casual environment. What are common mistakes you think you've seen at the entry level? That, you know, an, an example would be like applying for a thousand roles and not just one, you know, things like that, I suppose. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's certainly one because um, you definitely want to see that there's some focus and some real intention behind it. Um, I would say also not knowing much about the companies, so like coming on an interview and then not knowing really about the company that you're interviewing with. Uh, where, uh, what locations are, do you all typically hire into for interns and entry level? Yeah, so mainly the World Trade Center area. Um, so we have an office in the World Trade Center um, and then Connecticut. And where did you uh, go to school? I went to Temple University. Oh, that's Pennsylvania, In right? Philly, in yeah, Philadelphia, right. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, wonderful. Um, Latoya, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I know it was on short notice, and um, I very much appreciate it. I'm sure the students listening will appreciate it equally, if not more. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much.